Hi and welcome to my Blender tutorial for how to do a 3D head track. Now what we're going to be doing for this tutorial is tracking at least 8 markers on our face in Blender and compositing a uh, 3D helmet on our head or whatever we want. Now what we're going to be using for our trackers is a Sharpie. I find that this works best other than tape because if you cut tape you usually cut it in squares and that kind of confuses Blender when you rotate your head it loses the track. So I find that circles usually work best or you can use a pen or anything, but Sharpie's probably best for this. Uh, the minimum Blender accepts is at least 8 track markers, but we're going to be doing 12 just in case we can't get a track on one of the markers. And also we're going to want to shoot a higher shutter speed, 1 over 30 should be fine for a slow uh, face movements. And also uh, no facial expressions for this, because if you have your track markers on your face and you open your mouth or move your face, it's going to throw off the track in Blender. Alright, now that we have our track markers on, we can record our clip. We've imported our footage onto our computer. We're going to go ahead and open up Blender. And we want to grab this bottom left tile and drag it over to make a new screen. And click on this tab and open up our movie clip editor. Now, some people say you need to convert your footage into a JPEG sequence, but I find that using H.264 AVI works just fine. So. We're going to go ahead and find our footage and open the clip. Okay, now that we have our clip, we want to go over here into this marker display and click this search tab. And now we're going to start placing our markers. To place a marker, hold down control and left click and put one down for each marker. Now once they're all down, what we want to do is hold down shift and right click on each marker to select them all. Now we want to try and do all these trackers in one quick swoop to make it as quick as possible. So once we have them all selected, hold down control and hit T and that'll start the tracking process. Now once our tracker is done, you can see a few of them got lost, so what we're going to have to do is go back and fix those. And just to replace it, go ahead and right click on the tracker that's lost and come up into this window and left click and find the spot where it should be and then hit control T again to start forward tracking now once that's done keep doing all the ones that got lost Once our tracking is done, you want to scrub through your timeline and make sure everything, all the trackers look good and smooth, make sure none of them jump. And then we need to input our camera data, and it'll help solve for our 3D camera. So what I used was a Canon 600D or the T3i, and my focal length was at 18 millimeters. Now you don't need to do this if you don't know what camera or focal length you use, but it does help with the camera solve. Now, um, I like to refine the focal length of 1 and 2K. I'm not 100% sure what this is, but it helps get me a lower solve number. And now we're going to click Solve Camera Motion. Alright, now that that's done, you'll see down here we have an average solve error, and I have an average solve error of 0 0.25, which is a very good track. If you have anything above 3, you're going to want to um, look at your track markers and find which one that can be giving you a problem. And if you can't fix it, delete it and try tracking a different point. I've had a, a solve error of 200, and once I would put another tracker, it would go down to 2. So one tracker can really make or break your tracking. So now that we have a good uh, solve error, what we want to do is click Set as Background and Set up Tracking Scene. Now we can go ahead and pan back over to our 3D scene and as you can see as default we get this little plate when we hit uh, set up tracking scene but we don't need that so we can go ahead and delete it and here you see we have our camera and our track points over here so to view our camera we're going to go ahead and hit zero and you can see our footage is here and it's a little bit washed out so what we want to do is hit N or T to bring up the side panel and 
toggle down background image and put this up to 1 or 100%. Now to get or to make sure our uh, 3D track looks right, I'm going to go ahead and take this box and grab it and position it over. And we'll go in 3D space and we'll grab our box and put it where our face should be. That looks about good right there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit zero to go back into our um, camera. And that's right where my face is. So we're gonna go ahead and scale this box up a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and grab it. And we're gonna go ahead and scrub through our timeline and as you can see, the box sticks to our face, just like so. And so now that that looks all good and there's no glitches in it, we can go ahead and actually put on our mask. So I'm going to delete this box. It is import our mask. And I made a Daft Punk mask, so we want to append and go where you have it saved. Mine would be Daft Punk small. And you want to load up the material hit link and append, go file, append again, go back, do the mesh, link and append, file, append, go back, and do the object, and link and append. Now once we have our 3D model in Blender, what we want to do is select our 3D model, go ahead and hit A for all, and deselect the things that you don't want to move. So if we didn't want to move these lights, you would right click on them twice and that would deselect them but we want to move those and we want to move them over to our track points over here so hit G for grab Whoops. we actually have our camera selected make sure you deselect the camera go ahead and hit G for grab and move your 3D head over to these track points now we all, all we need to do is line everything up with a little bit of rotation and scaling Now once you think you have it uh, pretty lined up, go ahead and hit zero to view our camera. And go ahead and keep adjusting it until it looks like it's on your face. I'm going to go ahead and move it back just a little bit. And one more thing, if you want to get uh, some nice uh, dynamic lighting, go ahead and set up a light by hitting Shift A and going down to Lamp and creating a point. And I've got one here and I've got another one here that I want to set up on this side of the face. Put a little bit farther away. And what you want to do is if you have multiple lights, select them and then come over here to this little um, keychain and drop this down and click camera solver and it'll add these lights to the camera do it to this one too camera solver and so now if you want to see the lighting on the mask go ahead and click this little tab and click on texture and we're going to go ahead and hit zero and part of my mask isn't showing because I haven't set it up right, but you can see as we move the light stays in one position. Now we're going to set up the uh, rendering. So what we want to do is hit this little camera tab right here. Go ahead and bring this up. Um, you want to make sure that your resolution is at the resolution that you uh, shot at. Bring this all the way up to 100% and make sure your frame rate is what you shot at. And anti-aliasing, I would leave that at 8 or 11. The more, the smoother the image will be. 8's a good number, though. And we want to do either JPEGs or PNGs. I'm going to go ahead and do a JPEG. If you would like to do it, or do your final composite in After Effects, I would do PNG and then click on RGBA for alpha, so you'd have an alpha channel. And then you, can, you, then you could just bring your mask on your uh, footage layer in After Effects. But I'm just going to go ahead and render this final thing out in uh, Blender. I'll make sure the quality is at 100%. Make sure we have a place to save it to. And just click Animation, and it'll start rendering it out. 
And once your sequence is all done rendering out, we're going to go ahead and open up After Effects or any type of uh, editing program. And we're going to go ahead and grab our sequence here. And just drag in the folder that you put it in and it will automatically make a JPEG sequence or PNG sequence. And drop it down into your new comp button. And once you have it in, you can put effects on it, color correct it, uh, do whatever you want. Um, if you guys happen to do this, send me a link. I'd really like to see you guys' work. And if you have any questions, uh, just go ahead and send me a message. Thanks for watching.